and roll. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm back out here again on the range doing this Instagram thing. Um, I've committed to doing these 10 minute videos and I, I pre-filmed a few of them because we have the advantage of the range, which is why I'm wearing the same thing. I'm not stinky. I'm not like a weird Smurf kind of dude. I have different clothes. Uh, debatable? debatable? I don't know. All right, so guys, I want to talk to you guys about um, some thoughts through shot process. So I don't want to overanalyze or beat a dead horse and get into a tactical discussion or argument, even though I have been in this before. But I want to highlight some constraints that you're going to deal with when drawing a pistol from concealed or from outside the waistband carry. Uh, appreciate the feedback, by the way. I got more DMs in the last week than I've ever gotten from police officers, from civilians, um, from military who said, hey, man, I don't get this training. We don't get this often. And the fact that you're doing this for free is a value. And I appreciate it. I appreciate you. If you support Philcraft Survival, you're supporting me. So go support the company at Philcraft Survival um, or PhilcraftSurvival.com. So let's talk about some considerations. Let me demonstrate a couple of things. Two tenths of a second. That's how long it takes for somebody who's presenting a threat to react, pull the trigger, break the shot. It's about two tenths. It's about, the studies show it's about 0.17 to 0.23 audibly versus visually, but that's about two tenths of a second. Okay. A zone hit, uh, which I walked it out 15 feet. A zone hit 15 feet for me. That's about six tenths of a second. I could draw this pistol in six tenths of a second and do that all day long. If I push it below six tenths, ooh, I start slowing down uh, or I start becoming inaccurate and I start falling apart. So I have to slow it down in order to be uh, efficient. Let me show you something else. Right in the pump house, more accurate shot more time with my eyes on the target, identifying the threat. This is me walking down the hall, potentially holstered, identifying the threat, and then addressing the threat. Again, that's about a second and a quarter. Here's the overall point. You don't have the time to do a lot of things that we think we do when we're practicing fundamentals of marksmanship. Being in a gunfight is very different than doing fundamentals. The benefit of marksmanship is you have the luxury of time. In a self-defense scenario, you don't have the luxury of time. In fact, if it's an immediate threat versus an imminent threat where you're perceiving behavior that potentially could be immediate, you are in uh, the game of reacting to contact and, and working through this scenario as fast as you can using uh, speed and accuracy as your two principles, maintaining control. At the same time, by the way, you're in a suppressive fight or flight, stress inoculated. That's a whole new cup of tea. Like a lot of people don't talk about that. Like, yeah, it's easy for gunfighters and demonstrators and trainers to shoot really sexy on a flat range in a USPSA comp where they've been tested with a pro timer, but get a gun pointed at you for reals. Get shot at for reals. Be in a deliberate scenario where you're fighting for your life for reals, and that changes everything. Sympathetic nervous responses dictate a lot of the behavior that we can get away with. Let me demonstrate. So I'm right here and I identify a threat. I'm working from the holster. Well, I talked to you in another video about staging. My feet, even my hands. I might put my hand here just to get the free rep of exercising that so when I'm from here to here, if something pops off, I could grab the gun really quickly. So if I'm going through here and I'm shooting a five shot string, I'll shoot it and then we'll talk about it. three different iterations of three five round engagements. When I shoot five rounds, one, I shoot in cadence. Why do I shoot in cadence? Because that, that optimizes my speed and accuracy on target. That the idea is I'm allowing the gun to do its job and its cycle of operation. If I outrun that pace, I potentially do what's called a double tap where the gun goes boom and it cycles up and I go boom before it settles. The difference between that and letting the gun settle is about a a tenth, a little bit over a tenth of a second. So I want the gun to do its job mechanically. I also get alignment. I allow myself to get alignment on the target where the background of my vision, meaning I have target focus, because that's where I identify the threat, 
the background of my uh, vision, I have a blurry gun. This is not point shooting, by the way. A lot of people have debated me like, Mike, you're te teaching people gun sh uh, uh, point shooting or reflexive shooting or instinctive shooting. I'm not doing that at all. The, the best shooters in the world will have target focus when they engage. And they will tell you that in the background of their vision, they have the front and rear sights. They could see that. When we, come, when we become more familiar with that, we become more optimized and trusting that solution and breaking the shots. I podcasted Dan Horner a year, a year uh, ago before COVID. He won every championship that he shot. He won every competition, every stage of fire. And he said he transitioned his field of view from target to his front sights once on a 27 yard pie plate. The podcast is on Phil Craft Survival's podcast. Mind blown, right? So am I telling you to point shoot? No. The first five round engagements, I'm letting the gun settle and do its job. That typically translates to accuracy. So did I have front sight focus? No. And some will say, well, Mike, you're only 15 feet away. 15 feet is where the average gunfight takes place. It's actually 13 feet, but I'm just giving it a couple more feet. 15 feet. I wear size 13 shoes. I took 15 steps from this target to make sure that you uh, you guys who, who like to debate this thing can't debate it. So that is reflexive in me getting um, a target focus, whereas where I identify the, the threat and then a blurry front and rear sight in the background of my vision. Now, the last five shots that I did, I stitched the target from sternum to head. The reason I did that is because I wanna teach you how to evolve your eyes. One of the best things that you could practice on your own is evolving how your eyes work. So if I see a threat, I identify it, and I point to it, that's more impactful than dry firing a trigger and resetting it for hours. Why? Because I'm training my eyes to see something, my physical body to address something, and then I could switch it back to my front sight. So let me give you the example that I want you to try at home. I see something, I address it physically, and then I shift my focus from target focus to front sight focus. Right there in those three movements, I've practiced and trained my eye to do something intentional. Identifying a threat, addressing a threat, and then finding front sight focus. So now when I drive my gun rapidly, in about three tenths of a second, which is how long it takes you to go near to far or far to near in your focus, my eyes snap to the front sight automatically. So I could shoot boom, 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 stitching from sternum to head. And when I do that, by the third or fourth shot, I could put it exactly where I want it. Now you see how this vertical line runs in the middle of the target? It's because I'm aligned, I'm driving it up, boom, 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 front sight focus, boom, front sight focus, putting it exactly where I need to put it. That's the evolution of the shot process and your eyes. You could train that on your own and get better at that. If you're not finding the front sights by shots four and five, simply slow the cadence. One, two, three, four, five. And then you could practice this. Identify the target, address the target. One, two, three, transition your field of view on four to your front sight and five. I'm also stitching the target from sternum to head because I'm increasing the probability of putting this bad guy down. This is not a paper and steel game. This is a game against human beings. If I'm defending my life, I wanna turn this person's system off. That means the central nervous system that runs center line of this person, I need to disrupt and destroy and put them down, turn them off. So a nine mil round in diameter is allowing me to spread the love through, through the sternum to the head, increasing the probability of that hit. We fall in love with marksmanship. And if you got five tight rounds off the pump house, that's not doing anything for you. And also when I draw the pistol, if you look right here, as soon as my hand touches the pistol and I'm bringing the pistol out here, I'm actually in line with the highest hit probability on this target, which happens to be between the taint and the neck, and I'm putting it somewhere in the center. That's the highest hit probability, because if I throw the round anywhere, it lands in these four quadrants. As opposed, if I quarter the top of the chest and I miss, I'm going to mic over the heads. Now, I learned that as a sniper in special operations, but it applies to the pistol. So my pistol draw stroke happens to be from here, Drawing in line, one, two, three, four, five. So the last thing I'm gonna do is walk you through it live, really close, just so you can get it. And I'll talk through it step by step. So I'm here, I stage, I identify the threat, I come off of it, I go for the draw stroke, I draw the pistol. As I bring my hands together and the target's in line, I'm finding the trigger and breaking the first shot. That first shot might not be on target where I need it to be, but I'm not gonna wait for it. I'm not gonna wait 
for my eyes to catch up with the gun, I'm going to send the gun and let my eyes catch up with the gun. So as I'm here, I'm raising the barrel and I find the center of the target and I break the shot right there in the pump house. As I come up, I'm trying to find my front sights, fighting the gun to the, to the distance in between my eye and the target. And then I break it high in the sternum. Now I have my front sight captured and I'm putting it exactly where I want to in the same hole. So I'll come here, one, two, three, four, five. Does that make sense? I hope it does. If you have questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks guys, peace out.